The deep dive reveal for Cyberpunk 2077 has recently hit the internet by storm, and much like the rest of you, I'm super excited to be able to play for myself. However, as I was watching the high octane gameplay and strong story elements, I couldn't help but notice something a little interesting. Something familiar. During the gameplay reveal, we got to see firsthand what the power of hacking the world around you can do to alter your playstyle and influence the game itself as you go from objective to objective, completing tasks in a way that encourages freedom of choice to a level that has rarely been seen in previous RPG titles. Now, what if I told you that this wasn't the first game to implement mechanics like this? A much older game that went under the radar for most players when they were younger. The 2012 EA Blunder Syndicate. I want to clarify, when I say blunder, I don't mean in gameplay or storytelling. On those fronts, this game was next level for its time, bringing elements and plot twists that couldn't have been found in games released around the same time, but we'll come back to what went wrong for this title later. For now, let's dive into what made this game a perfect foundation for what will be coming with Cyberpunk 2077's release. Keep in mind that I'll not be touching on the history of the Syndicate franchise or much of the story itself, since this video will be more directed towards the comparison between Syndicate and Cyberpunk. So if you're interested in understanding more of how this game came to be, watch this retro history of the franchise by Ahoy, and this gunplay review by Clue if you're more interested on how the gunplay works and how the gameplay itself interacts with the player. They're quite the watch, and will provide a lot more context when talking about Syndicate. But otherwise... I will be doing my best to summarize the game's story and core functions myself in this video. Syndicate is set in a cyberpunk reality where corporations run the world, and anyone who isn't one of the elite is left in the dirt. You play an agent named Miles Kilo, working for one of these mega corporations titled Eurocorp, who has supplied you with a tool of destruction to protect their interests, the Dart Chip. These chips are the divide between those in power and those in poverty. In the world of Syndicate, connectivity is everything. When the game starts, the story itself isn't anything more than what you would expect from a stereotypical FPS game. There's a bad guy, kill the bad guy, repeat, by the way, you were the real bad guy the whole time. And a little sprinkle of sequel bait near the end. The game does very little to immerse you in the world you're in, but what they do show you makes you very curious to learn more about why the world is in the state that it is, or how the chip users in high society interact with those that are disconnected in the underground. While we don't know much about Cyberpunk's story outside of the tidbits we've gotten in the trailers and gameplay, the parallels between these two worlds start to take shape rather quickly. In Cyberpunk, we've been shown that there is a clear difference between the high society and the lower class crime-filled underworld. Cyberpunk will get to use its open world nature to allow its players to explore the conflicts and events of this political climate in a way that Syndicate never had the chance to dive into. Syndicate may have had an interesting setup, but Cyberpunk will have a definite path to take its base ideas to the next level. When I was watching the most recent gameplay reveal for Cyberpunk 2077, I had a major sense of deja vu when I saw the hacking mechanics that were showcased in their Netrunner playstyle, with a heavy emphasis on hacking your environment and using the enemy's tech against themselves. In Syndicate, while it's not on such a sandbox level as Cyberpunk, you're able to hack into various sources. Turrets, drones, terminals, even soldiers. The co-op in the game brings an even deeper level of this hacking mechanic, adding in abilities that can't be found in normal campaign, and bringing this aspect of the game to an even brighter spotlight than it was before. But it's here that the similarities and foundations begin to crumble. Cyberpunk looks like it will have solid gunplay, intense combat scenarios, and an amazing detailed open world. Even though Syndicate is impressive in many aspects, it can hold a candle to what Cyberpunk was able to accomplish. But I believe that is one of the most important parts of these differences. Syndicate was a failure due to many things. But the consensus in longtime fans is that it was a sudden genre change, and it shows. When EA released the game, they had a lot of hype building up for it. They managed to sign not one, but three A-lister electronic artists to create soundtracks for the game. One of the most iconic ones being the Skrillex remix of the original Cyberpunk 1993 theme that's first seen in the announcement trailer. Mission clock on. The market is at a critical juncture, and war is brewing between the corporations. Breach is 
Reaching successful. Activating suicide. The game even came with a little code on the inside of the case that allowed you to download the soundtrack of the game. It was that important. It didn't stop there, however. Weapons trailers, gameplay reveal trailers, a launch trailer, and even a trailer for the co-op mode that was hardly expanded upon. This hype, combined with the poor gameplay and lackluster story, ultimately led to the failure of Syndicate and a shutdown of the franchise. So where does that leave us? Why do I bring all this up in the first place? Well, if you care at all, I'm one of the only people that actually liked this game. People may be very confused by that statement, but let me explain. It has its moments of bad writing, bad scenarios, bad animations, but... It also brings an incredible new way to play that had barely even scratched the surface of its own potential. Syndicate was an FPS that felt refreshing in a market saturated by cliche shooters at the time. Despite its flaws, I can't help but wonder if CD Projekt Red had looked at this game when they thought of making a cyberpunk game, and thought of improving upon the things that Syndicate did correctly. The hacking, the gunplay, it's simply all so familiar, and it's for that reason that I'll be picking up Cyberpunk 2077 when it finally comes out. Oh, and Syndicate has Brian Cox, but Cyberpunk is Keanu Reeves, so we have to leave the legendary side character as a stalemate for the time being. Thanks for watching this video. If you feel like supporting the channel, feel free to leave a subscribe down below and maybe even drop a like. And if you have other games that you would like me to touch on by any chance, then you might as well leave a comment down there too. I'm down to read any ideas that you might have. Hope you all have a great day.